morning, everybody, and, and welcome back to um, another season of the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're, uh, we're excited to be here and be rolling today and uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, from now and as long as we can run this thing out. So um, I'll start off just with a, a roster update. Um, four injuries to start camp. Uh, two, I think everybody knows, Dermot, shoulder, hymen, knee, uh, both continuing to rehab. Uh, we've got Garrett Wilson, hamstring. Uh, he'll likely miss most of camp. Well, definitely camp and then most of the preseason as he rehabs from that. And then, uh, as you know from last week, Joseph Wall, uh, broken finger. Uh, he'll start getting back on the ice this week, and, uh, and we'll see where he's at as we get rolling from there. Um, moving on from that, I, I just want to address the, uh, the Mitch Marner situation. Um, I'm happy to uh, address the matter today. He's obviously not here for the beginning of, uh, of camp. Um, I'm happy to address the matter today and, and take, uh, take your questions on it today. But then after that, uh, we won't have anything from our end until there's a solution to the matter one way or the other. So I'll give you the opportunity now to ask anything you want. and. Until, uh, until we have something finished uh, beyond that, um, be uh, radio silence from us. So um, with that, I'll turn it over uh, to you all. So regarding Mitch then, mm -hmm. how is this situation similar to Willie last year and what have you learned that you can do differently with Mitch? I, I, think, I don't think they're all too similar. You know, there's there's obviously some similarities, but um, Williams' situation was one where I think we've discussed a lot. It was really a three four month process. This one has been much longer than that, and um, I think one of the things we've learned is once it starts, continuing to give updates and continuing to discuss it, I think is is not always the best. I know it, it doesn't serve um, the media and the public overly well, but in, in learning from that, I think that that's why we want to handle it that way, and we'll we'll roll from there. And just continuing to stay in contact and try to find our way to a solution. Don't let too much time go by and trying to wait each other out and roll from there. Kyle, as time goes by here, this team is obviously becoming more and more, I guess, quote unquote, yours. Mm -hmm. uh, the ideal is something I assume you'll always be chasing, but do you feel like you're closer now than you have been to accomplishing that? I think I don't ever look at it, Justin, as, as mine. I think it's, it's ours. And, uh, I'm just a, a member of the of the organization and, and trying to carry out the vision that we all have uh, when it comes to player acquisition, drafting, player development, so on and so forth. Uh, this, the members of our staff. I, I think every day we move forward, we're trying to uh, get one day closer to um, being at the best we can be each day. I don't think that we're necessarily there yet. I, I don't know if you ever really are, but I think every day we go forward, we're trying to find the best that we can be each day. And, and when we talk about the process, I know it's. Not as uh, not as fancy as talking about you know great outcomes or anything like that, but I think that's really what we're focused on right now is, is heading into camp, get, making sure we're set today for tomorrow and going on ice and, and getting all the systems and such that Mike wants to get in place and get rolling and then continuing to carry on from there. But I don't ever look at this as mine because I think it, it belongs to the city and the organization and, and the players much more than it does to me. Kind of yes. assuming Mitch is going to get signed at some point in time, how important is the core of this returning group, given that come the end of camp, almost a third of your roster might be turned over? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that you know, once, once we get that situation uh, cleared, Henny, we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll have everything kind of settled for, we hope, for a while. And we hope more and more players play their way into that, what we consider the core of the group, right? And, um, whether it's you know, guys that are going to get a greater opportunity now or young players up from the Marlies who, are, um, who we think have a lot of promise, uh, forwards, defense, and goaltending. We hope more and more players get added to that group and it just carries on. I think stability is an important thing. Obviously, you're 100% you're right. We have made a lot of changes to the roster uh, through trade and free agency. Uh, players departing more so in free agency than, than we added uh, guys who you would consider core players. But... I think the more the group has time together and, and continue to build their bond and, and stay on that track, the better for the whole. Once you get Mitch done, Kyle and, and Hyman and Dermot are back with injury. Yeah. Have you, will, you, will you have provided Mike a, uh, with a roster that can win the Stanley Cup? I don't. Uh, I know it disappoints a lot of people, Terry, but I, I don't ever look at it as can this roster do X. It's really can this roster give us chances to accomplish those types of things and. 
can the roster that's put together at the beginning of the year get better each day throughout and each game throughout and weather different storms and adversities that's come that come its way during the season and roll from there? I think you know Mike has proven he's a coach capable of winning the Stanley Cup. He's been to the finals on two other occasions and 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 uh, gone to Game Seven in both of those. So I know that the coaching staff, with their work ethic and preparation, and adding Paul McFarland and Dave Haxtell, are going to do their part. And I have a lot of faith in in the core of the group that they're going to do theirs as well. And we'll just continue to keep rolling every day here and, and uh, try to be the best we can be every day and, and uh, in the end hope that you get some fortune and you, you step up in key moments and, and it results in, uh, in success. Carl, just, um, just going back to Mitch, uh, yeah. with uh, where, he's, where things stand in the market and mm -hmm. the cap and everything, is, is his side being reasonable in their demands? I think in every negotiation everybody thinks on their side they're being reasonable and I think the major argument then comes down to arguing about whether who's more reasonable than the other, right? And uh, I think it happens in every negotiation we have, whether it's at home or in business or in employment or in, co in public contract negotiations like this, where there's obviously a strong public investment in the, in the matter and people care deeply about the team. But I mean, I think at times they've probably thought we haven't been reasonable and, and, and um, I would say it's vice versa in every negotiation that we do. But I, I don't try to get to, um, tied into that and, and Mitch is a great player. He's a great person that comes in here every day and brings great energy and enthusiasm and has obviously had a great three years here. So we're just focused on trying to bring it to that and always keep that in mind regardless of what the noise is around the situation. Kyle, given that uh, it appears you'll be operating an LTIR this year, mm -hmm. I'm wondering how much more complicated it will be to complete an in-season deal should you not get one done ahead of time. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, obviously something we have to plan for, I, I think, without boring everybody with the nuances of the um, LTI calculations and contract calculations as they get in season. It, it, is a, it is a factor, I think, and everybody knows that already. It's been publicly reported. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, and, and Kevin asked earlier about the differences between William and, and Mitch. That is, a, that is a, a significant difference that will impact as it comes closer to October or two. Does it have to be done by October? I mean, we sure hope so, and we don't want to think about going into the season with uh, without Mitch on the roster on opening night. We didn't want to get to this point without him here either. I think that's been publicly stated a number of times, but um, it certainly impacts all of that for sure. Based on that, how confident are you that you can get a deal done by the regular season? I'll stick with the same answer I've given for a long time now. I'm optimistic that, that we will. I think you, know, you don't want to envision the team missing players at any point, Mark. And, um, you know, we're hopeful to get it done. We've gone through this last year. Um, you know, I, I would feel a little differently, I think, personally, if there weren't other situations around the league that were, that were sort of in the same stalemated position. I don't know if any of the other, the other uh, situations have, uh, have solved themselves this morning or by the time I came over here. But um, I think that will influence things as well. Kyle. Do you have any concern that it can't be repaired and that when Marner resumes his NHL career, it might not be in Toronto? I, I don't ever like to think that way, Elliot, that Mitch would play anywhere else other than here. Um, he's a big part of what we do. Um, he's an extraordinarily talented player. And you know, in addition to that, I think even though these negotiations can uh, go in ways in which the public can form a different opinion, He's an excellent person that walks in here every day uh, with great energy, great enthusiasm, and brings a lot of life to our club. So um, in the end, I think these things happen. I think with William, there was, uh, there was some heated times as well, but you know, that relationship is, is excellent. And I have faith that as with all of these things, once, they, once it comes to a solution that you know, we'll have to have a probably very blunt discussion about things and then we'll carry on. There's gonna be no grudges from, from our end whatsoever. Kyle, do you anticipate naming a captain at some point during this camp? During the camp, you say? Uh, I, I don't know. I, it's probably the most honest answer I can I can give. We'll, uh, we 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 talk about it frequently. It's obviously, I, and I think a lot of it is driven by the fact that everyone in here likes to talk about it. It's a it's a good topic to write about on uh, on days when there maybe isn't uh, the most interesting stuff. You just go right to captain. That's like the easy button. I feel, but. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, it, it's it, a year ago. I, I I may have stood here, had different conversations where I didn't didn't think it was you know the most important thing. I think now what we've seen, having gone through a, a season with the group, is 
we've got a great number of leaders in there and they are all independently capable of probably doing the job. Here, I think it's, it's a very different job than it may be elsewhere. And um, you know, the, the ability to come in every day and, and be the face of the team and carry the message of the team is very important to, to us. And we don't, the one thing we don't want to do is rush just to make it happen and say it's done and, and do it now versus waiting till we're absolutely 100% sure and then um, regret that decision later. So we're just going to be absolutely certain about that because I think it's, it is an important thing to the community and, and to the organization. So myself, Shani, and, and Babs will continue to, to discuss it and, and uh, at the appropriate time, if we go down that path, we'll, we'll uh, be sure to let everybody know in whatever way Steve wants to roll it out. On the, uh, the Marner situation, Kyle, mm -hmm. as uh, you get closer to the, the regular season when uh, it would become a little bit more difficult to manage, uh, mm -hmm. how much does the threat of a potential offer sheet uh, weigh into uh, how you approach it over the next few weeks or so? I, I don't. I think I've got two parts to my answer on this. The first is, I mean, the, the potential of an offer sheet has been there since, since July. Um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, as... as um, as few offer sheets that there have been, there have been fewer in season. I think there's been one in season. I could be wrong, and, and you, someone will correct me if so, and that, that's that's fair. I think there's been one in season offer sheet, and, and there have been you know, more uh, in the off season. Um, so it, it's it's a possibility. There are no rules against it. It's a mechanism which teams can use to acquire talent for their teams. Um, if it happens, as we said leading into the draft, we'll we'll make our decision then and, and address it. But. Um, I, I think that you know the second part to, to my answer, Dave, is that you know I think one of the things that we're really looking for in our in our group this year, not only our, our players and our, our staff, but everybody around it, is we I think we have to really start to begin better at weathering these types of things. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, Tampa and Boston, and they're obviously rivals in our division, very good teams, and uh, I think the thing that we can learn from them rather than than being obsessed with them is how they deal with different things that happen throughout the year. When you look back at last year, Boston missed Chara for a month and a half, McAvoy for more than that, Bergeron for extended period, Pasternak for a month and a half, and they just keep rolling on. And what I'm really looking for in our group and, and everyone around our, our team completely is how we weather those things. I think if we're going to continue to take steps as an organization, we have to be able to accept that it's, it's athletics, whether it's through contract, injury, surprise, retirement, ineffectiveness, things are going to happen that we didn't expect. And if we want to continue to take the right steps, we have to weather those and just keep the train rolling on the tracks because the rest of the league doesn't stop. And that's really the one thing early on in, in the season that I'm looking for in our group. Kyle, you'll have um, two new assistants on yeah. the staff this year. What attracted you to um, McFarland and Haxall's candidates, and how do you think they're going to have an impact? Yeah, when it comes to the assistants, I think, you know, they're a personal thing for for Mike, and I think you know the way that we handled it is, is Mike. Um, you know, right, right after our season ended uh, and we knew things were going to happen, Mike um, had always we had Paul McFarland as a as a guest coach at our development camp. But I want to say it was in Niagara on the Lake, 2016, and and uh, he'd coached with DJ before. So when he got let go in Florida and we knew there was going to be some changes here, um, I knew that was going to be a guy that Mike would really want. And and Paul uh, is a very intelligent person. He's had great success. Uh, with the power play, with face-offs in Florida. I'll let Mike uh, talk more in depth about him. And then uh, as we went through the, the re uh, replacing DJ, once DJ moved on to Ottawa a little bit later, you know, Mike and I had great discussion about a number of, of different people, and Mike led the charge there and in terms of uh, in terms of who he would want and, and what, what direction we wanted to go, and then we, we just kind of worked together on that. And in the end, they have to be his call with his assistance. And, uh, we're really excited about both guys. They've brought a lot already to the table, and Dave obviously has experience as a head coach in Philadelphia, plus working with college athletes at North Dakota. It's a unique offering that uh, that's different from what we had before. Uh, we'll miss DJ and Jim a lot, but we're, we're excited about Paul and Dave, and, and I think that's a key part of our camp is as a coaching staff, they're going to be together and coaching for the first time and, and continue to get used to each other. But I know from the summer they've, they've worked extraordinarily hard to get ready, and, and uh, as Mike will tell you, it's Better question for him, but met when they didn't really have much to meet about anymore because they were working uh, ad nauseum throughout the year. So I'm excited to see them all work together. What, what is your relationship with the, with the coach now as of the ball with the last four or five years working together? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, we, we talk every, every day, sometimes multiple times per day, and 
like the thing that after you know the first four years here together is it was it four three three years the first three years here together where, where I was in a different role you obviously get to know each other you're not working as closely as, as we did last season and so you take last season and, and you get, begin to get used to each other and then I think at the end of the year reflect on how it went and how we want to operate moving ahead through the summer and into the year and, and it's been great we talk a lot we disagree as any coach and GM do a lot we agree on a lot of things and we work through it all and I think the the, the key is on the areas that you disagree that you you respect one another and, and you work through all that and I think we're we've uh, we've worked on that throughout the season and, and uh, throughout the summer just with some honest discussion and it's it's been very very enjoyable and I'm excited for for the season with it for sure Kevin. Kyle in terms of Mike there was some criticism of his handling of the ice time in game seven some other mm -hmm. stuff in that playoff series you said after the season that you would kind of your job had to be evaluated and that mm -hmm. is when you looked at how Mike handled this team last year yeah um, did you were there, was there stuff that you needed to adjust and that you guys needed to come together on in terms of shared vision and kind of how you're going to move forward together? I think at the end of every year, Bruce, and the when when it's a GM and coach relationship, you, you want to talk about what the vision is for the club. Because I think at the end of every year, where things you're, you're not going to win every year, it's just impossible. But even if you have a great season, as best it could have gone given the circumstances, whatever those circumstances may be, even at those times, you want to be changing and adapting and not staying stale. So we spend a lot of time talking about all of that. We spend a lot of time talking about the players and their usage and and uh, Mike's ideal way of dealing with it. And, and I, I think we're, we're certainly on the same page there. I know everyone looks at that game seven and they bring it up all the time, um, you know, particularly with Austin. But I think if you look at the series as a whole, um, you know, we're trying to match them depth for, for depth, right? And, and um, you, you can't just uh, throw all your guys out there all the time and maximize their minutes and burn them out. And I think we, we always want to be adapting and learning from, from what went wrong and how we can uh, change it. I know uh, the players are also welcome to give their opinion on it, and, and they have as well, right? But for us, we need to continue to improve the overall conditioning of the group. and, and once we once the players grow and mature that way, they'll be able to handle more and more. And, and it's trying to manage that. It's still a very young group at the same time. And so I'm not saying that their conditioning was poor, just that we need to continue to be improving on that. So when we get to the end, we know that they have the gas in the tank that they can outlast the other teams and they can handle more responsibility. So I think we all have to do that uh, together rather than just throw it on the coach or on the players. And uh, I deserve uh, I deserve my share of that as well. So, perfect. Thanks, everybody.